fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hi! The Lone Ranger and Tonto were accompanied by the masked man's nephew, Dan Reed, when they reined up in an arroyo near the town of Wayne. Oh, so oh, 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 We'll make camp right here. Uh-huh. There's good water nearby. Oh, just a minute, Dan. Don't unsaddle, Victor. Well, well are we going to stay here? I want you to go on into Wayne. Well, all right. You said you had a special job for me. I'd sure like to know what it is. Uh... I'll tell you something about it, Dan. About a year ago, a man named Porter was executed by the law in Wayne. He was guilty of murder. His son, a boy a couple of years older than you, has been living alone ever since. I see. The Padre told me about him. Does the son go to the Padre's mission? No, but Sheriff Lonergan does. The Padre got his information from the Sheriff. We not know Sheriff Lonergan. We're going to get acquainted with him, Tonto. After Dan is acquainted with Dave Porter. But where will I find him? You'll, uh... See his shack just before you get to town. There'll be a lot of wood piled nearby. Wood? Yes, Dave is a wood chopper. That's about all he can do to support himself. See, everyone in town is set against him. Because of his father? Yes, Dan. Oh, golly, that's not fair. No, perhaps not. It's human nature. Now go along and see what you think of Dave. If he's the kind of a fellow you like, it will be worthwhile to help him. Uh, King Masabi, yes. you not tell Dan about... Rod Renfrew. Who's Rod Renfrew? I'll tell you about him later, Dan. I want to get more information first. All right. Steady, boy. Steady, Victor. I'll get on my way. Adios. Adios. Adios, Adios Dan. Come on, Victor. Dan found Dave Porter chopping wood near the door of the small shack in which he made his home. He asked a few questions about the community and found Dave eager and apparently grateful for someone to talk to. You planning to settle in, Wayne? No, but I've got to stay in town for a few days to meet my uncle. I suppose the hotel is pretty expensive, isn't it? Well, food and lodging at the hotel is more than I could afford to pay. How about letting me bunk in your place and chop wood as payment? Say, that makes sense. My name's Dave Porter. And I'm Dan Reed. During the next few days, the two became good friends, despite the several years of difference in their ages. 
Dan worked hard helping chop wood to a convenient size, then load it into a small cart and deliver it to the townspeople. Here, yeah, Dan. We have enough for another load. Gosh, chopping wood is sure good exercise. Well, it, it isn't fair for you to work for nothing just to help me. <laughs> well, look at the exercise I'm getting. Now, look here, Dan. Let's have it straight. What? Why are you helping me? Why'd you come here and start talking to me in the first place? <laughs> well, golly, Dave, I, I told you I was a stranger in town. I didn't know anyone. Well, you know someone in town now. And you must have heard what they say about me. Oh, gee. Dan, if you aim to stick around, Wayne, you better break off with me. You'll get a black eye for being my friend. People around here are downright cussed, Dave. There's no call for them to treat you as they do. Well, I... I told you about my dad. It doesn't matter what he did. You've been on the level. Hey, there. What? What? I guess that man's calling to you, Dave. You! Hey, boy! It's Joe Winters. He's a deputy sheriff. Oh, 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 oh! Oh. Looks like you're in trouble, Porter. Sheriff wants you, right away. What's he want me for? I didn't ask him. I'm just delivering his message, that's all. You needn't expect to come back here. You better go and see him proud, or he might come and get you. Get up there. Sheriff Lonergan had been in Wayne for comparatively few years, but his sense of fair play had won him a host of friends. Dave entered his office apprehensively. You, you want to see me, Sheriff Lonergan? Yeah, come over here, Dave. Sit down. Sure. Huh? Take that worried look off your face. I'm not going to eat you. Deputy Winters said I, I needn't expect to go back home. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Things have been sort of rough for you since your father... since a year ago. I've managed to get along. You know, Dave, you've got some mighty good friends... I don't know who they you are, Sheriff. You told me quite a bit about your father. I didn't know he used to be a lawman. He was. And he was a good one, too. Then he got mixed up with a crook. Hmm. Rod Renfrew, wasn't it? Yeah, Renfrew. Before Dad realized what was happening, Renfrew got him mixed and taken a bribe. Dan was exposed and put out of office. Mm, I heard. After that, he didn't care much what happened. One thing led to another, with Renfrew pulling the strings, and Dad... Well, he... You know what happened to him. Mm. And Renfrew is still a free man. That dirty crook. I'm hoping someday I can get my hands on Renfrew. Yes, he's as crooked as a corkscrew. Yet he's never seen the inside of a jail. I know it. Dave, did you know he's returned to these parts? He has? Yeah, things got too hot for him on the West Coast, so he come back here. Wells Fargo was stuck up a short time ago. And there's reason to suspect that Renfrew is the one who did it. Oh, I bet. Wait, wait, Dave, and hear me out. A number of lawmen think he's got the cash right now. But we've got to get proof. And that's where you come in. Well, yeah, but how can I help on a thing like that? You've got to team up with Renfrew. Oh, me? Team up with that crook? Dave, I've got the whole scheme all worked out. You're going to make out like you steal cash and escape from me. I'll fire a couple of shots, but you'll keep going. In no time at all, the word will spread all over the county. Yeah, I'll bet it will, Sheriff. Everyone's expecting me to go bad. And you go to Pine Flats and get acquainted with Rod. That'll be easy because of your dad's acquaintance with him. Learn all you can. Where he has the Wells Fargo money hidden, then get in touch with me. All right, I'll do it. Good boy. Here, uh, here's a bundle of cash. This is what you're supposed to steal. Yes, sir. <laughs> My own horse is saddled and waiting at the side of the office. I'm to start right now? Yep. Oh, uh, one thing more, Dave. Here's a, a gun. I've had it in my desk drawer for a long time. It's loaded. I'm to take this gun? That's right, Dave. It belonged to your dad. Dad's six gun. The one he carried when he was a lawman. Good luck, Dave. Now bust out that door fast and keep going. Here I go. Hey, come back here. Come back here with that money. Come back, I say, or I'll start shooting. You let me get me alive. Get up here. Dan Reed and a number of townsmen were near the sheriff's office when Dave raced away on the lawman's horse with bullets flying over his head. The news spread through the town like wildfire. Dan Reed mounted his own horse, Victor, and hurried to camp where he told the Lone Ranger what had happened. The masked man seemed unconcerned. In fact, he wore a look of mild amusement. 
I don't know what got into him all of a sudden. I was talking to him just a few minutes before he let off from the sheriff's office. Dan, don't worry about Dave Porter. He's helping the sheriff get evidence against a crook. You mean he's working with the sheriff? Yes. His escape was part of a plan to make people think Dave has turned outlaw. Then it was all a put-up job? That's right. Say, you had a hand in this, didn't you? You said you thought Dave Porter deserved a better break than he'd been getting. Oh, he sure does. I talked with Sheriff Lonergan. When I told him the Padre had sent me, he agreed to cooperate in a plan. Then, I hope Dave Porter will be wearing a badge of a lawman before we leave this neighborhood. It was about a week after Dave's escape. Sheriff Lonergan was in his home. He was just about to go to bed when he heard a soft rap on the back door. Sheriff. Oh, Dave. Dave, come in, come in. I had to see you, Sheriff. How is everything, Dave? Anyone see you come into town? I don't think so. Hmm. How'd you make out? I got the Pine Flats all right, and I found Renfrew. He doesn't know I blame him for what happened to my dad. Good, good. Well, did you team up with him? I told him he had to take me in because I was hunted. <laughs> I guess anyone in town would be glad to shoot me on sight. Oh, don't let that bother you, Dave. We'll clear your name when we put Renfrew behind bars. I told him Dad had always spoken well of him, and he took me in. But, Sheriff, he's up to something. I don't know what it is. Hmm. Why do you think he's up to something? He's been questioning me about the Badlands to the north. He was real interested when I told him I knew that country. He was? Yeah. Huh? Well, suppose you learned anything about the Wells Fargo cash. Uh, no, sir, but there's a cupboard in Renfrew's place. He always keeps it locked, and he carries a key in his pocket. Now, maybe that's where the cash is. Mm, if he heads north, he'll take the cash with him. And he'll take me, too. I'll have to go. If I don't, he'll get suspicious. Mm, let me think a minute. Neither Dave nor the sheriff heard the back door open. Neither was aware of the fact that a tall, well-built man had entered the house silently and drawn a gun from his holster. Dave, I'll tell you what you do. You play right along with Renfrew. If he says anything about another robbery, you let me hear about it. And if he starts north across the Badlands, uh, you go with him. I'll have men on hand to close in. He'll undoubtedly have the Wells Fargo money with him. He probably will. He wouldn't leave it behind. But we'll get that money and get Rod Renfrew. As soon as he's behind the bars, I'll swear you in as my deputy. And let everyone know how you helped get the man who led your father into trouble. How interesting. Friend, you. You're both covered. You followed me. Of course I followed you. I suspected you were up to something when you came to my place with a story about dodging the law. You didn't fool me for a minute. And when you gave me money to take care of for you... <laughs> well, that was too thin. All right. You know the truth. I heard all I need to hear. I'll take that gun you're packing, Dave. Don't resist. Do as he says. Yeah, nice gun. I remember seeing it when your old man carried it. Still got his initials on it. Well, Dave, I don't like to be tricked, and I don't like spies. You were spying on Ah, just a minute, Ren. You sent him. Look you... out! I... You didn't have to crack him on the head with your gun barrel. I cracked him on the head with your gun. The one with your father's initials on it. Now, get out of here. Go ahead, walk ahead of me. But listen. Do as I say, get going. I aim to cross the Badlands, and you're going to show me the way. No, I won't. Oh, so you're getting conscious, huh, Sheriff? Well, I'll fix that. No, no. There. What? You shot him. Yes, and I'll toss your gun beside him. Looks like you'll be blamed for a murder when they find that gun. Now I guess you'll be glad to cross the Badlands with me. It'll be better than staying here to hang. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. At the point of a gun, Dave Porter was forced to mount and ride ahead of Rod Renfrew from the town of Wayne to Renfrew's place near Pine Flats. When they arrived... Turn up that light. I left her burning low. Mechanically, hardly caring what happened, Dave obeyed. Here's a key. Unlock that cupboard. Hurry up or I'll fit this gun barrel to your head. That's it. Now pull out that canvas bag. Yeah. Wells Fargo. That's right. Wells Fargo's paying my expenses from now on. <laughs> the sheriff wanted you to find out about that money, didn't he? Well, you carried out his orders. But you're not going to become a deputy because of it. Put it in the saddlebag. There. Yeah. I don't know why you don't shoot me and be done with it. Maybe I will. But first, we're crossing the Badlands. And if you're smart, you'll play the game my way. Maybe I'll let you team up with me when we get up north. Maybe you can have a pile of money for yourself. We'll see. Tonto had gone into town on the morning following the shooting in Lonergan's home. In less than an hour, the Lone Ranger and Dan, who had remained in camp saw their Indian friend returning at breakneck speed. Tano must have some news. Yeah, saddle up, Dan. All right, if you say so. Hey but... there, Silver. Time's an important factor. or Tano wouldn't be pushing Scout that hard. That's right. I didn't think of that. Steady there, Victor. I wonder what's happened. We'll soon know. Oh, Scout, oh, fella. Oh, fella. We'll be ready to travel in just a minute, Tano. I can't eat trouble in Wayne, Kimosabi. They're shooting there last night. Shooting? Ah. Young fella in Sheriff's home. Me see deputy... Him look for Dave. Deputy Winters? That's right. Are you ready, Dan? As soon as I tighten this cinch. Easy, Victor. There. You not want to hear what happened in town? I'll find out for myself, Toto. I want to talk to the deputy. All right, follow me. Easy, big fellow. Hey, boy. Hey. One, two, three. Stop, Victor. In town, the masked man learned that Dave Porter was in a serious predicament. The masked man didn't linger. With Dan and Tonto following, he hurried to Pine Flats, to the place where Rod Renfrew had been living. Everything about this room indicates a sudden departure. I looked out and back. The horses are gone. We'll go outside and see if Tonto's found a trail. Find anything, Tonto? Uh, your tracks. Two horses. Them head north. Toward the Badlands. How old are those tracks, Tonto? Eight. Maybe ten, twelve hours. Twelve hours? Golly, they have a long start on us. Yes, fill the canteens. That's a trail we've got to follow to the end before it's too late. At first, the trail was clearly defined and easy to follow. Then the soft turf gave way to rock, where the marks of horses' hoofs were less distinct. It was hot in the rocky badlands, and water holes were few and far between. Darkness overtook the Lone Ranger and his friends, and they had to camp until daybreak. The second day was hotter than the first. The sun beat down mercilessly, and shimmering heat waves rose from the arid ground that extended as far as one could see. Late afternoon found the horses of Rod Renfrew and Dave Porter nearly exhausted. The outlaw had been holding a position slightly behind Dave. You'd better stop again, Porter. Oh, oh boy, oh. How much farther we have to go? We're just about one quarter of the way across this desert. You mean we've got three times as far to go? For a moment, Dave made no reply. He turned in the saddle, and his bloodshot eyes held a new expression. He was no longer the defeated captive. His chin was high. There was a certain strange, victorious note in his voice. No, Renfrew. We don't have three times as far to go. What do you mean? We're not going any farther. No, no farther. Do you remember how long ago we filled the canteens? Yes. Long way back, isn't it? It's even farther to the next water hole. What are you getting at? This is the last of our water, Renfrew. You see it? I'm pouring it on the sand. Oh, stop. Stop throwing out that water. I'll, I'll shoot. Go ahead, Renfrew. Shoot and be done with it. Then what'll you do? Did you think I'd lead you to safety? Oh, wait a minute, Dave. Listen to me. No, you listen to me. This is the end of the trail, Renfrew. The end for both of us. Me, I don't mind. I saw my dad living the life of a hunted man, and I don't want it. 
I'd sooner go out right here. Now. No, no. There's no need for that. Shoot me if you want to. You're jailed here on this desert. Just as much as you'd be jailed in town. And you'll pay the same price for your murder, the sheriff. Rope a desert. It's all the same. Well, you listen the to only me. difference is my dad somewhere. was given a decent burial. You won't get that, Renfrew. Not here. Well, why don't you shoot? Dave. Dave, you can find a water hole. You know this desert. I came this far, Renfrew, just to be sure you wouldn't get back. I'm sorry for the horses. Maybe they can make their way to water. I sure hope so. Don't be a fool. Fool? My dad was a fool. I was a fool. We both thought we were smarter than you. You outsmarted both of us. Try and outsmart that old son up there. Yeah. Try and outsmart those buzzards that are circling, waiting to pick our bones. Try and outsmart this desert, Renfrew. Dave, Dave I'll square things with It's you. too late for that. No, no, it's not too late. I'll write a note. I'll, I'll sign my name to a letter admit that I shot the sheriff. It'll clear you with a murder. You can take it back with you if, if you'll only get me to the North Country. Go ahead and find your way, Renfrew. Maybe you can do it without me. I can't. Well, that's too bad. With the water gone, Rod Renfrew's thirst increased tenfold. He pleaded for a time, then urged his horse ahead. Dave followed silently for over an hour. Then the outlaw dropped the reins. His horse stopped of its own accord. Get me away from here. I'll give you this... all this money. Hey. That's not yours to give, Renfrew. That's Wells Fargo money. Look, can you give It'd be a shame if, if the buzzards up there spoiled it before someone found it. Those devil birds. Don't get them. You won't get them, Renfrew. They, they'll get you. And it won't be long either. The situation was one to test the courage of a man, and Renfrew failed the test. He slid to the ground, a cringing coward, a weakling in the face of death, while Dave became the stronger man. Both had dismounted. Renfrew had fallen to the ground. Order. Don't let me die. Maybe, maybe I ought to drill you, Renfrew. That'd be what you gave the sheriff. My friend. The sheriff. Water. Dave looked contemptuously at the man on the ground. Fainted. <laughs> Dave thought he heard hoofbeats, but his own senses were reeling. He tried to focus his eyes. He rubbed them in an effort to brush away the blur. <laughs> Looks like horses. It seems like I, like I can hear them, too. Ears. My, my ears are playing tricks. <laughs> don't matter now. Nothing matters. It's easier to... to go this way. The boy slumped to the ground and lay there, clinging to a shred of consciousness. I, I, wonder, I wonder if that's my... my dad going. I'm tired. This... this ends a trail. Easy, big fella. Toto, you look at Renfrew. I'll see about Dave. Uh -huh. Dan, get a canteen. I have one right here, steady boy. How about Dave? Is he alive? Heart's beating. What about that crook, Toto? Uh, him still alive. Here's the water. We'll get a little between his lips and bathe his face. Golly, I hope Dave is going to be all right. He'll be all right, Dan. But fix a blanket for some shade until the sun goes down. Then I think we can take both of these men back to Wayne. It was several days later when two horsemen approached the office of the sheriff. The first horse carried Rod Renfrew, who was followed by Dave Porter holding a gun. The Lone Ranger, Dan and Tonto, had left Dave at the edge of town with instructions to deliver Renfrew to the law. That'll do, Renfrew. Rain up right there. Ho, 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 ho. Dave dismounted. Though he fully expected to be held for murder, he was grimly determined to see that Renfrew was delivered to the law. The door opened and Deputy Winters came out shouting. Good for you, Dave. Good boy. Huh? Oh, you brought your prisoner in, huh? Yeah, but Winters, what I What about did... the Wells Fargo cash, Dave? Did you bring that in, too? Oh, yeah. It's in my saddlebag. Ah, oh, fine work. 
Hey, Shorty. Yeah? Take Renfrew in the jail and lock him up. All right. Uh, on, Dave, you'll you make a top-notch deputy. I didn't do it, Winners. There was a mess. We man. know all about that. And we know you didn't rob the sheriff. It was all a trick. I don't understand. How do you know? Sheriff Flanagan was shot. Shot with your gun, Dave. The gun he gave you. Oh, yeah, but I... <laughs> uh, Dave, you didn't know it. But when he handed you that gun, he had it loaded with blank cartridges. What? Just to make sure you didn't get yourself into serious trouble. And he wasn't killed. Oh, his coat and leather vest were burned by powder, and he had an awful headache for a time. But aside from that, he's all right. <laughs> Gosh, I... Oh, there he is now, coming this way with a crowd following. There he is, boy. That's my new How <laughs> oh, they're cheering for you, Dave. Yeah. The sheriff's told them all about yeah. you. You mean the people of Wayne are cheering for me? Just listen to them. Good work, Dave. What are you going to do with all that reward money? Hey, you be a lawman like your father. Hooray for Dave Porter. Hooray for Dave Porter. Dave, Dave, let me shake your hand, boy. I heard all about you bringing in the stolen Wells Fargo money. Your friend Dan Reed told me. Oh, so that's why he rode on ahead. Gosh, Sheriff. Well, gosh, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'll tell you what to say. Just raise your right hand. Now put your left hand on this book and repeat what I say. When we're done, you'll be a lawman. Deputy Dave Porter. Oh, Chef. Gosh, uh, golly, thanks. Oh, don't thank me, lad. You can thank the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.